Hi there, this is the Wrong Electronics Parallax, a stereo analog low pass filter. And this is the Wrong Electronics Vertex, a stereo VCA. The premise of these two modules is quite simple. We have two ears, we should use them. That's the kind of thinking I can get behind. Now I know we've all got short attention spans these days, so before we get into the nitty gritty, here's a bunch of patches I made earlier.
hope you enjoyed those sounds. Let's get stuck into it. Vertex Stereo VCA, not something we've seen many of in Eurorack, so it's cool to see one hitting the market. Now, what you get out of Vertex depends highly on what you put into it. So at the moment, I've just got a mono input. Let's turn my filter up so you can hear it. And we've got the two outputs, each panned left and right. So it's going to both. And we can use this skew control to attenuate either side. So with a mono input, that effectively becomes a pan and you can use this as a panning VCA. So if I throw a, a bipolar LFO to the CV input for that, it will pan around the stereo field beautifully. Easy, awesome, already handy in a Eurorack system. Now, the behavior when you put in a stereo source is slightly different. I'll plug in something quite different into the right input. Okay, so they're both it's at the center right now. Now if I skew this to the right, we'll only hear that right input and vice versa to the left. So it's not moving that right signal to the left side or vice versa. It's just attenuating each one. And if we put our bipolar CV back into that input, then it fades between the two. And big shout out to the neat visualization too. Such a handy feature on modules like this. So back to our mono signal for the moment. Now, like most VCAs, it has a gain offset and a CV input to control your amplitude. So let's throw an envelope at the gain, turn it down, CV input up. This is just an envelope from my Bifaco Rampage. And yeah, we have the expected result. I think we all know what a VCA does. It's not uh, unlocking anything new there. But I will say that if you turn this VCA right up, then it actually clips the, uh, the control voltage. So this is like a, just a basic exponential decay envelope from the Rampage, but it's actually flattening the top and adding a, a hold stage to the envelope. If you're really into that kind of analog percussion low pass gate kind of thing then that's a way you can dial in a little bit of punch and of course if you've had some gain offset then it won't be completely quiet when the envelope goes down we add our lfo back in and it starts rolling around the stereo field nicely. Of course, we are not limited to a slow LFO going into that input. We can make it audio rate. I'll flick this switch. got a pretty cool effect. If I'm not mistaken, that's amplitude modulation technically because we're modifying the amplitude of each side. I think I could technically be wrong. Not really my area of expertise, but either way, it sounds pretty cool, I think. And of course, it's stereo, which makes it even cooler. And you can apply some manual offset. Or manual gain. Flip it around the other way. Fun to be had. All 
right, let's talk parallax, the stereo low pass filter, circuitry based on the Sequential Circuits Pro 1 filter, the legendary synth from the 80s. Obviously a few major differences, the main one being stereo in and out. There's also a two pole output instead of just a four pole output. It also overdrives in a slightly different way. I used to have a Pro 1, massively regret getting rid of that thing. I sold it to get a, a machine drum, hated that thing, massive regret. So having the sound of that filter back in my life is making me a happy boy. Um, it's 16 HP, so quite big for a low pass filter module, but big is not bad guys. It makes it easier to use. All the panels have got a lot of space around them. They're easy to get to. The gray knobs represent resonance control and the black knobs represent frequency control or cutoff frequencies, that sort of thing. So let's hear some sounds. I've just running it in two outputs of mono at the moment so we can hear the different characters of the two pole versus the four pole. This is the two pole. This is the four pole. So as you can hear, the four pole attenuates those higher frequencies more as expected. Let's play a sequence. This is the two pole again. Let's move to the four pole. Give it some resonance. So it's quite smooth, this filter, which, yeah, as I said, used to have a Pro 1. This is what it sounds like. Now, something I did find is this filter is quite sensitive to input level, so it's actually attenuated right now. It's just a single oscillator going in. If I turn this back up again, it overdrives and it changes the kind of character of the resonance a fair bit. So if I put the filter about there, and this is up very high now, and if I attenuate the level again, you can hear the resonance become more prominent in your signal. Turn it up again, overdrive the filter, and it's kind of chunkier sound. So it's something to keep in mind if you're going to get this filter. Keep track of what your input level is at. Let's go back to the four pole. Now I've got an LFO in this modulation input. It has two frequency modulation inputs. One is bipolar, one is just uni unipolar. Uh, this is great because you can just put your envelope in the unipolar one and then you can have a modulation source in the, what do you call it, bipolar one. So LFO in there, envelope in the other one. You've got a nice classic kind of synthesizer voice right there. All right, let's get some stereo action going. So we'll, we'll go with two pole for the moment. Back to two pole, pan it. All right, we are now in stereo. So, as you probably saw in the intro, we have F skew, frequency skew, which lowers the cutoff on one side and raises it on the other. And if we throw a LFO at that, then we can automate that. So now we have this stereo analog voice floating around our heads. Okay, let's change it up and dive in further. Okay, I've set up a little acid -y sequency thingy. We've once again got 
skew modulated by an LFO bouncing it around to either side. I'm going to put another LFO into the resonance skew. This behaves the same way as the frequency skew. It boosts the resonance on one side and attenuates on the other side. I'm going to also add another VCO. So as you can hear, we've got some resonance bouncing around from the left ear to the right ear now. And it's a highly complex sequence now. And just to take things a step further, because why not? It's a filter demo. Let's get crazy. Gonna put some audio rate modulation in here. <laughs> And you've got that kind of vocal, weird, croaky thing going on. Alright. Enough of that. Let's, for our last act, dive into the filter pinging. Alrighty. The all-important resonant sound and filter pinging exercise. It is a resonant filter. It will generate a tone when you turn the resonance all the way up. It's a very cyanish sounding tone. It's quite nice, very smooth. Unfortunately, this filter doesn't track Bolt Pro Octave, so we can't play it melodically sticking to the normal Western scale. Wrong electronics tell me that it just wasn't possible to do that with the way the stereo circuit works. Fair enough. We can make two. All right, let's add some triggers. We'll get this filter pinging. Everyone knows what pinging means in Australia, right? Never mind. And of course, because we can skew these filters, we're, we're effectively changing the frequency of each tone. So we're generating chords. Let's change the panning to the center. Now, if you're wondering why this upboard is just sitting here, hanging around, doing nothing, it's because I'm going to do this. You get some weird feedbacky kind of action going on. Kind of reminiscent of a buchla sound. Buchla? Buchla? I don't know. Almost sounds like an out of tune vibraphone or something. The resonance comes on really smoothly on this filter too. There's no sudden kind of jump. And of course we've got this resonance CV input as well. So let's utilize that. Of course, this is the kind of thing that rewards experimentation, which is basically the case for all filters, really. It is a special case that we have two resonant peaks, though, to make tones from. <laughs> We've done it, guys. We've made some fart noises. We have arrived. 
<laughs> okay, well that seems like a good place to leave this demo. Wrong electronics, parallax, wrong electronics, vertex. Couple of great modules. Check them out if you can. Mm-hmm.